Last night, I had the distinct privilege of being a guest on Meghna Chakravarty's uh, program on WBUR On Point. Um, we were talking about the global supply chain and the shock of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. She asked me a question for a, uh, she asked me for a detailed example of how um, robust supply chains can achieve both efficiency and um, resilience. Um, I couldn't come up with one on the program, but after thinking about it for a bit, I was able to uh, come up with the following example, which we talk about in our book, Industries and Disasters, Building Robust and Competitive Supply Chains by Nova Science Publishers. Um, in the book, we talk about where we describe Mr. A, who worked for Toyota. Uh, he had a lot of experience over his career helping out suppliers. Um, and helping improve uh, production sites. Um, and he uh, visited a factory uh, in uh, Kobe after the big earthquake in 1995. Um, he got there right uh, the same day that the earthquake had happened. It was that morning, and he got there um, a little bit afterwards. Um, and he, you know, he saw the huge destruction there. Um, and, you know, someone like me, uh, just a normal person, a regular person, uh, I hope I'm a normal person, but a regular person would see what he saw and just be devastated, right? It would just uh, jaw drops. It's just, oh my God, it just overwhelmed. But uh, Mr. A, with all his experience, uh, he was able to uh, see uh, the site um, and break it down into... Um, many small problems. It's one huge problem to the um, to the eye of someone not used to seeing uh, problems and how they can be solved. Um, so um, in his daily experience uh, he's working each day to solve a problem, uh, working with others to solve problems um, and you know on that day all those problems which had typically been arranged uh, horizontally had been arranged vertically on the same day, all the problems were together. And yet, it was still a bunch of problems. Um, and so he, his eyes were able to break it down into the different problems. He was able to think of who he could, who he could ask to help solve each of those problems. And also, uh, the people at the site, those who could make it to the factory, although many of them were taking care of their own houses, their own families, which were also uh, devastated. Um, so he was able to bring in a team to work with him to, um, to, to get that site back and running. And the owner of that supplier, the, uh, well, the, the, the plant manager at the supplier, um, he and, and his team said, this is going to take three months to fix. Uh, and Mr. A said, it's going to take three days. And it did take three days um, because that's the typical time they're able to uh, set up a new line, do things quickly. They're used to doing things fast, so he knew it could be done, and it was done. Um, and so, you know, this is not uh, the same as a pandemic, the, especially the global pandemic of the scale of COVID-19. This was an earthquake, somewhat localized, still quite devastating, but uh, nothing compared to the supply chain shock that uh, this global pandemic is having, or even the global, uh, the supply chain shock that happened uh, in 2011 from the uh, Great Japan, Great East Japan earthquake uh, on March 11th. But um, to take lessons from this experience, we can still uh, apply them to the global pandemic uh, and, and the supply chain disruption. For example, in the United States, uh, it's not a uniform lockdown, right? There's a lot of variation by state uh, in terms of uh, who is able to get about, who are defined as essential workers, and how they are to get to their uh, essential sites. Um, and so there, there is still, uh, you know, quite a lot of variety. And so you cannot have just one top-down solution that's going to solve all these problems. You need to have people on the front line, like Mr. A, who are able to solve the problems that are happening right where they are, and to, they know how to work with others to solve problems. They know who they can invite to help them solve problems. And so I think um, this detailed example can help explain why um, a robust supply chain is able to keep, have both efficiency and resiliency, which I hope in this new, um, new chance we have to um, build a, a new economic system post-COVID-19, 
Uh, I hope we can uh, empower the workers and more companies can empower the workers um, and to use uh, their problem-solving skills uh, for the good of the company, for the good of society, um, and of course for the good of themselves as well. Thank you.